Let us pray. Lord, as your scripture is read and proclaimed this day, we ask that by the power of your Holy Spirit, that our hearts, our minds, and our very lives may be transformed by your holy word. Thank you for your gift of scripture, we pray. Amen. All right, as I start out this morning, you're going to say, boy, Pastor Rick is getting old and he's sounding like it. Have you ever noticed that as a society, we sometimes overuse words to the point where they lose their meaning? Never. Never. <laughs> and does it start to drive you a little bit nuts? For instance, take the word literally. Did you know that the word literally has a literal definition? in a literal manner or sense, exactly. In other words, it means no exaggeration or descriptive embellishments. But literally, that is not how we are using the word anymore. Literally. And I think if I hear one person use the word literally incorrectly, I am like literally going to explode. <laughs> Or how about this one, the word icon or ironic. Many people use ironic to describe something that's coincidental, inauspicious, or unexpected. But that's not what it really means. English teachers, are you with me on this one? That's not what I ironic means. It's more specific, describing something that's the exact opposite of what you expect. So no and this is really going to show my age, no, Alanis, rain on your wedding day is not ironic. Thank you for some of you getting that. I don't feel quite so bad. I asked one of Owen's nurses if they understood the reference, and she just looked at me and goes, who? I go, Alanis Morissette, who? I go, never mind. <laughs> now the fact that the inventor of the stop sign didn't know how to drive a car. Now that's ironic. Another word that I think we use too much as a society is hero. According to dictionary.com, a hero is a person noted for courageous acts or nobility of character. But you've surely heard people called heroes left and right for just doing their jobs or or even for just being a decent human being, right? I mean, think about it. Is someone who makes millions of dollars a year to play a sport really a hero for playing the sport they're getting paid to play? They may be fun to watch. They may have dedicated their life to what it is that they're doing. They may be a good role model, but is that really a hero? When I think of heroes. I think of, of persons who, who individually act to try to help others. They make a difference in other people's lives because of their words, because of their actions, because of their discoveries. They do things that are brave or important now, in the fictional world, our best-known heroes all wear capes, which I'm not sure why, but boy, it makes me want to have a cape. We call them superheroes. And I'm going to ask you a, a, a very divisive question. I know in this divisive time in our country, we're not supposed to ask such questions, but I am going to ask you to pick which side you are on. When it comes to superheroes, who do you prefer, DC or Marvel? Who likes DC better than Marvel? A few, yeah? Yay, Batman. 
All right, who likes Marvel better than DC? Huh? Yeah, this goes Spider-Man. So uh, the, there is uh, um, uh, there was uh, a poll recently uh, asking who is your favorite superhero uh, and your favorite villain. Uh, and in villains, the number one villain is the Joker, uh, followed by Catwoman, who I just recently, uh, thanks to watching cartoons with my son, realized the difference between Catwoman and uh, Batgirl. Two different characters. I know. You, you can tell I, I'm more of a Mar Marvel guy. Uh, Venom, Thanos, and Lex Luthor, who I've been told my, uh, I, I'm copying his haircut. The favorite superheroes. Number one is Superman. Followed by uh, Spider-Man, Batman, Captain America, and Iron Man. But when we think about superheroes, when we think about just heroes in general, one place we don't think about seeing heroes or superheroes is the Bible. But there are, there are heroes, there are superheroes in the Bible. Now, they may not wear capes or spandex or utility belts, but they are just as courageous as any hero you might see on screen or printed on the page. These heroes risked everything to do what was right and to help others. Not for the hope of future gain, but because it was the right thing to do. Now, the greatest hero of the Old Testament is a guy by the name of Moses. He is mentioned more than 760 times in the Old Testament. The figure of Moses is revered by Christians, Jews, and Muslims alike. As the first leader of the Israelites in the Bible, he was responsible for leading God's chosen people out of Egypt, for receiving the law from God and giving it to the Israelites, and for communicating with God on behalf of the people of Israel. Moses even met God face to face. The first five books of the Old Testament, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, are often credited to him. Moses is most definitely a hero. Yet Moses didn't do it alone. He was helped by several heroes on his way to being one of the greatest leaders God has ever used. The story of Moses reminds us, it reminds us that even heroes need heroes. Asking for and receiving help isn't a sign of weakness. It is utilizing the gifts that God has placed in your path. See, often we look back at the rocky times in our lives. And when we do, we will realize that the greatest gift the Lord has given us is the presence of another dedicated believer. So as we look at the story of Moses, what we will discover is that he would have never been able to fulfill his life's calling without the help of other faithful folks in his life. So let's take a look at, at a couple of, of those faithful folks right here. The first person that I want to look at are two folks named Shapora and Pua. Shapora and Pua. Now, Moses, as the Bible tells us, was born in the land of Egypt. Uh, for, for those who might not be really super familiar with Moses, uh, the Israelites, uh, those uh, dis descendants of... Uh, of um, uh, Jacob and uh, uh, of Joseph, um, if you remember Joseph, uh, who went, was sold by his brothers um, 
into slavery in Egypt. Well, his brothers brought all their families, uh, and uh, they settled in Egypt uh, after Joseph was uh, basically made the prime minister, if you will. And what the Bible tells us is that this group of people began to do well and began to grow and grow and grow. As I'm sure many of you know with families, they can get quite big, right? People start having kids and kids start having kids. And before you know it, there is quite the group coming over for lunch, right? Well, this is what happened in Egypt. And we're not sure what happened if, if there was a change in, in uh, the... the, the uh, uh, dynasties of pharaohs, or something happened. And down the road uh, uh, a ways, generation after generation, the pharaohs quit under remembering what Joseph and the Israelites had done for them. And they began to be afraid of the Israelites. They began to be afraid of all of the foreigners in their land. And uh, what happened is the Pharaoh decided enough was enough, and he was going to do something to stop all of these Hebrews from growing in his kingdom. They were afraid that they would get so numerous that they would take over. Now, this was a problem that had occurred in Egypt multiple times throughout its long, uh, millennia-long uh, life. And so... Uh, in order to stop the Israelites from uh, taking over, Pharaoh said to the midwives, which were those uh, ladies that helped uh, uh, women give birth, said, look, when the uh, Israelites have a baby, if that baby is a girl, good. If it's a boy, I want you to get rid of it. And the first two heroes are two women, two Egyptian women by the name of Shapora and Pua. Who didn't do what the Pharaoh had ordered them to do. Instead, they, well, for the lack of a better term, they lied. They told Pharaoh, they go, look, those Israelite ladies, they are strong, boy. Woo! And by the time we get there, that baby's already been born. And so there's nothing we can do. Uh, 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 you know, sorry. These are heroes. Shapur and Pua, they faced the possibility of losing everything they had protecting a group of people who were foreigners to them. That's a hero. Risking life and limb and property for people who don't even speak your language. Or how about our next hero, Jochebed, otherwise known as Moses' mommy. She was a hero. She was willing to give up her child so that he would have life. I remember a number of years ago, it, I was uh, at a relative's house, not a close relative, but a relative's house, and we were eating dinner, and I don't remember if it was a holiday. It must have been a holiday of some kind. And we were just eating, and the, the, the guy whose house it was was talking about his older sister. And I'm sitting there, and I'm thinking, older sister? He doesn't have an older sister. He's got a younger sister. And he's talking about going and visiting his, 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 uh, his older sister. And, and I lean over, and the guy I'm sitting ne next to, I, I go, Who, who's he talking about? And he just goes, like, like doesn't even like, miss 
a bite of mashed potatoes. Goes, oh yeah, he found out this week he's got an older sister. Could you pass the gravy? <laughs> what? Turns out he found out from his mom. Now, the, the, this guy would have been in his mid-40s. Found out from his mom the week before that his mom had uh, had, had a, a, a baby when she was in college and had given it up for adoption. And she had just reconnected with this, uh, with this uh, 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 woman on uh, like Ancestry.com or something along those lines. <laughs> and, and I'm like, wow, that's really something somebody should tell a guy before you start eating dinner. Because <laughs> apparently I was the only person who didn't know that he had a new sibling at 45 years old. But I think of this guy's mom, you know, and, and what a hero she was. And, and, and later on, I, I'd had this discussion with her about this and, and, and how it, it hurt her, her heart so much to give up this baby, but she needed to do it because it was not what was best for her, but was best for the child. And that's how Moses' mom was. She was willing to give up her child to be raised by the daughter of the man who's oppressing her people because it was what was best for her child, not best for her. My friends, heroes are willing to do what is best for others, not as what's always best for them. Or how about Miriam, Moses' uh, 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 big sister, who looked out for him? Now, I don't know how many of you have big sisters, but could you imagine owing your life to your big sister? Would she ever let you forget it? Because <laughs> Miriam not only watched Moses, but, but was really kind of the one that, that, that helped to make that connection and, and, and really made sure that Moses was, was taken care of. I, I could just imagine later on in life, Moses was bossing Miriam around and Miriam would go, just remember who was the one who got you out of that basket. Or how about Pharaoh's daughter, who was willing to overlook the, the, the racial prejudices of her time and to take this little baby and to raise it as her own, no matter what her family would say, no matter what other people would say, because it was what was needed to be done. My friends, what all of these people tell us is this. To be a hero doesn't require us to be some great athlete. It doesn't require us to wear a cape. It doesn't require us to, to have some sort of, of superpower. What it requires is for us to be willing to do for someone else what they couldn't do for themselves. To be a hero means to be willing to be the hands and feet of Christ for somebody who is in a desperate situation. To be a hero means to put yourself second and to put someone else first. So my friends, we can all be a hero. We don't need capes. We don't need uh, uh, fancy powers. What we need is a heart, a heart that is filled with the love of Christ and a willingness to put ourselves second and Christ first. Let us pray. Lord, we can all be a hero. But it's hard because it requires us to, to, to put ourselves second and someone else first. The greatest example of a hero we have is Jesus, who was willing to give of himself, to give all of himself for us. Lord, use us 
in whatever ways you need to help other people. Lord, thank you for the examples of the Bible and the Bible you have given us on how to live, how to love. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen.